Okay, so today we're talking about contrast. More specifically, tonal contrast and histograms. But let's start off with contrast. So what exactly is contrast in photography? Well, contrast just basically means difference, right? So difference of any kind in your image is called contrast. The most popular types of contrast in your image are difference between lights. So if you have a really bright part in your image and a really dark part in the same image, you'd say that there's a lot of difference between the lights in your image, right? So that is called tonal contrast. And um, the other kind of contrast that we generally talk about is color contrast. So if you have a lot of different types of colors in your image, then you have a lot of color contrast in your image. So there's color contrast and there's tonal contrast. There are other types of contrast, but these are the two most important ones. And generally when people talk about contrast, just contrast without saying if it's tonal or color contrast, they generally refer to tonal contrast, but um, it can also be color contrast based on the context. They can also be talking about just contrast in general and not, you know, tonal or color specifically, just, you know, general contrast in the image, both color as well as um, tone included. So contrast is probably the most important thing that separates good photographs from bad photographs. And it's it's probably the most important tool that all photographers should know and be using, right? The reason is that con contrast allows you to attract the attention of the viewer to what you want them to be seeing. So it could be color contrast, it could be tonal contrast, but you can use contrast in such a way that you kind of point the viewer's eye towards the object in the image that you want them to be looking at. So let's look at tonal contrast in this video, but before we dive into tonal contrast, you need to know about histograms. So we talked about the different tones in the image in the last video. Um, and we saw that everything that is in the black region and the white region has no details, which means it has no, um, no information, no color uh, information, no edge information. It's just pure black and pure white where you're losing the information that is present in the actual world. You're not able to capture that because it's too bright for your camera. So it just captures it as white or it's too dark for your camera. So it just captures it as black. So it's, basically no details or no information in this no no information in this region right and everything in between has some information the shadows are darker the highlights are brighter the midtones are right in between so this this scale here can be mapped to a graph and that's what we generally call a histogram right so the x axis would be exactly the same so here you would have the blacks here you would have the whites and you'd have all the other sections right here in between, right? The y-axis though would represent how much of your image is in this region. So say you have a completely black image, right? Your image is just completely black. Absolutely nothing in the image but black pixels. Your histogram would look like this. Everything in your image is in the black section. There's nothing else anywhere. Similarly, if you had a completely white image with absolutely nothing else, just white pixels, your histogram would look like this, where you have just white images, nothing else. Normal histograms are generally a mix. They look something like this, right? Where you have a lot of information in the blacks, a lot of information in the whites, some in the shadows, some in the highlights, a lot in the midtones. So this is how a general histogram looks. And understanding histogram is a very important part of photography because you cannot trust your camera screen. Obviously, when you start out, you look at your camera screen and you say, yeah, this looks bright or this looks dark. And then you try to change your settings and you know, that's how you learn. But as you move forward, you start to realize that the camera screen is kind of deceptive. You know, like um, every camera can have its own settings and it can look brighter or it can look darker. But more importantly, your ambient lighting can really affect what you see on your screen. If you're standing in a day of hot sunlight and there's like sun is right above your head, everything that you shoot is going to be skewed by the environment that you're in. And you're, you're going to look at your image and say, this is too dark, I need to, I need to get it brighter. But you're actually saying that because you're standing in a really bright environment. And when, once you go back indoors and look at the image, you're going to say, this is really, really bright. Why, why didn't I reduce my exposure? But um, the truth is, the histogram will not change regardless of your environment. So even when you're in a day of hot sunlight or you're indoors in studio lighting where it's completely dark, your histogram is going to show you accurately what your image has, unlike the screen, which is not a good criteria to look at your image and judge the brightness or the darkness of the different regions in your image. So it's important to know what histogram is and what it does. Now with this information, we can look at uh, how 
tonal contrast affects the histogram, right? So what is tonal contrast? Tonal contrast is basically difference in tones in your image, right? So basically, um, if you have maximum difference, if you have maximum tonal contrast, that means you have a lot of blacks as well as a lot of whites. So this, something like this, would be a really, really high contrast image, right? Because you have some sections in your image that are really bright, and there are some sections in your image that are really dark. So your image, it has a lot of tonal contrast. So this is how a high contrast image looks when you look at uh, the histogram for the image. Now, what does a low contrast image look like? There's not much difference in the different regions, right? So how would a low contrast image look? Well, a low contrast image, we already saw a low contrast image before where everything was black, there's no difference. So this would be a low contrast image. On the other hand, if everything was white, that would be a low contrast image as well. If everything was in the midtones, that would be a low contrast image as well. So this would be an example of something that is, this is a low contrast. Now, what would a medium contrast image look like? If you have a medium contrast image, the histogram is going to look something like this, right? Where you don't have a lot of difference. Like all, all the regions have almost the same amount of, um, you know, uh, it's kind of evenly distributed. So this is medium contrast. You have some difference, like you have stuff in this region as well as in this region. So there is difference, but it's kind of evenly distributed. So you don't have a lot of difference like you did in the earlier case where you had peaks in you know different sections showing that there's a lot of different contrast in there. So this is how um, histograms work. So now that we know what histograms are, Let's go back to tonal contrast and see some you know, interesting things about tonal contrast. So basically, tonal contrast refers to the difference in the brightness, uh, as we saw, the uh, light intensity of different regions of your image. So um, although it's important for all types of photos, tonal contrast are really, really important in black and white photos, right? Because you only have two colors, so it's very important to have these regions separated. So uh, if you have a bright region and a dark region, then it's okay, like you could understand the difference between them if you have color, but if you don't have color, then light is the only way to separate these images. So contrast become, tonal contrast becomes really important when you have black and white images or images where you have very little color and everything is almost black and white, right? Now medium contrast is when you have a photo that has a wide range of tones, widely distributed from pure black to pure white, as we saw here, this was our medium contrast image. Low contrast is when you have all your image uh, located in just one chunk of um, uh, the tone. Okay, so here we have some example of a high contrast image in black and white. So you see this becomes very important, the tonal contrast becomes very important in this case where there's no color but only black and white. Here is another image where it's almost black and white, there is some color but you can still see that it has such high contrast. Now here is another image where uh, you have, you do have color but tonal contrast plays a really important role because it is what separates the darker regions and the brighter regions of your image. This is an example of an image where you have medium contrast, where the contrast is kind of distributed across all regions of your image, where you don't have a lot of blacks, a lot of whites, or a lot of midtones. It's kind of evenly distributed. And uh, here we have an image that has low contrast, where uh, in this case, everything is kind of situated um, at the midtones, where it's kind of peaking at the midtones. There's no pure blacks, there's no pure whites, there's no pure shadows or highlights. It's all mostly midtones in this image. All right, so let's look at an, uh, let's look at some examples of images that uh, I have photographed so I can manipulate them. So here you go. This is the first image that I have where um, we have this person standing, um, leaning across this fence, and then there is the sky on the other side. So you can see that this one has pretty high contrast. And how do you confirm that it has high contrast? So just by looking at this, I can say that these regions are pretty bright and these regions are pretty dark. So it looks like a really high contrast image. Well, but how do you confirm it? To confirm it, let's look at the histogram here. So in Photoshop, you can bring up curves to look at the histogram. So as you can see here, it has this um, typical high contrast curve where you can see that it has two peaks, one on the right side and one on the dark side. And as we saw earlier, here is high contrast. And you see two peaks, one on either side, that's exactly what we're seeing here. All right, let's look at another example here. So this one, again, is a really high contrast image, as you can tell. You can see there are pretty bright regions here, 
This is completely white without any details, right? Completely, absolutely white. Also, there's like pure black regions here. So you can see these regions. In fact, all of this region is completely black. You cannot see anything through it. So it should be a pretty high contrast image. Let's look at the curves uh, section here and confirm if it is a high contrast image. So there you go. As you can see, it has a lot of peaks. The first peak comes over here and there is a peak here that you cannot even see because it is so close to the whites. As as we saw earlier, this region here is completely white. So it's it's you can see a peak over here that goes completely high in the white section. So that's 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 how you come to know that it has a pretty high contrast. Now, let's look at uh, let's look at an image that doesn't have high contrast that has really low contrast. All right. So this one, as you can see, has pretty low contrast. Now, what is the characteristic of a low contrast image? So this one, right? You should be able to see a peak in just one region of the image. Do we have that here? Let's confirm. Well, there you go. So that's exactly what we're seeing here where you have a peak in the midsection. All the tones in this image are actually in the same section. So you don't see a lot of blacks and whites and a lot of action happening. Almost everything is in this image is concentrated in the same region of tones. So that is a low contrast image. Now contrast is a pretty important tool when it comes to photography because one of the things that really separates good photographers from bad photographers or good photographs from bad photographs is understanding contrast clearly, right? So in this image, for example, if I want to attract the attention of the viewer towards this ship here in the center of the image, what I want to do is increase the brightness of this center part of the image so that it will be in a different tone and there is more contrast in this image just to separate out the center portion of the image from the rest of it. That's where contrast really becomes an important tool that photographers have to attract the attention of the viewer to certain portions of the image which they want to attract the attention of the viewer to. So in this case, what I would do is let me create a curves layer, which is what we were playing around with already. And let me mask it completely. And let me bring up. So what I'm doing here is just bringing up the brightness. And then it's not visible. The bright, the I just brought up the brightness, but nothing happened because it's all masked out. And what I what I should do here is create a hole in the mask so that it becomes visible, right? Well, that's 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 really really bright. Let me decrease the flow here. There you go. So now, now you can see that subconsciously the viewer's attention is directed towards the ship, right? This was how it looked earlier, by the way. This is how it looks now. It's not a lot of difference, but you can see that we've made some significant changes here in attracting the attention of the viewer towards the ship. Let me zoom in a little bit here and see, show the difference. So you see, this was how it looked before, and this is how it's looking now. It's not a lot of difference, but as you can see, it really helps attract the attention of the viewer. So this is how contrast really, really plays a big role. So what I did is I just changed the contrast of this image by making this region brighter and leaving the rest of the image at the same contrast. So contrast is probably the most important thing that separates good photographs from bad photographs. And it's it's probably the most important tool that all photographers should know and be using, right? The reason is that con contrast allows you to attract the attention of the viewer to what you want them to be seeing. So it could be color contrast, it could be tonal contrast, but you can use contrast in such a way that you kind of point the viewer's eye towards the object in the image that you want them to be looking at. You can also use it to separate out different objects if you want to bring out something and make it more visible, or you want to hide something and make it less visible. You can do all of those things by changing the contrast. If your object's tone is very different from its background, it's going to be more visible and it's going to stand out. If you want your object to be less visible and stand out a little less, you could reduce the contrast, make it similar to the background and it, it, it could like blend in with the background and be less visible. So these are the kind of things that you can do once you know and you know, uh, once you know what contrast is and know how to modify contrast.